I hate to start on a serious note, but I got a microphone and you don't, so <laughs> I'm gonna start on a serious note. I do really wanna take a second to talk about the real divide in this country, because I don't feel like we're talking about it enough. And that divide is normal people versus people who own reptiles. Am I right? <laughs> Can we talk about the real issues? <laughs> Like, have you ever been over to somebody's house and it's with mostly black lights and they're like, hey, got a turtle. <laughs> You're like, yeah, bro, I know. I smelt it when I walked in. <laughs> I'm gonna give you some advice here in Santa Barbara tonight, though. If you go to someone's house and it's lit with mostly black lights and there's no reptile in sight, I want you to get your drugs and get the fuck out. <laughs> no, I love drugs. I think they're cool. Um, I think they're cool. I'm actually a liquid, I'm a liquid sober person. Um, I can tell you what liquid sober means. Hopefully this will catch on. It means I don't drink alcohol, but I will do Molly, right? <laughs> no, my favorite though, my favorite thing to do is weed. I love smoking weed. Okay, that's a stoner response. We're out here, <laughs> light whistles. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Killing it. I, um, I love smoking weed, but I'm a type A stoner though because I'm a type A person. So what that means is sometimes I get really high and I'm like, every baseboard in this house is getting cleaned. <laughs> right? Or I get really high and I'm like, let's arrange this bookshelf by alphabet and color. <laughs> or I get super high and I'm like, what would it be like to fuck the human version of Excel? <laughs> Just does a lot of things, you know? <laughs> Truth be told, I'm trying to fuck Clippy. Um, I don't know if y'all fucks with Clippy. Two ends and two eyes that look like boobies, okay? I gotta see what he's about, gotta see what he's about. No, I think I like drugs because I grew up with this commercial on TV, and I don't know if y'all remember this commercial, but it's a frying pan on a stove, right? And then they crack an egg in that pan, and they go, this is your brain on drugs, <laughs> right? And then 20 years later, we all found out that fried eggs are delicious. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's what did it for me. <laughs> I think they made a lot of mistakes growing up, though. I think they made a lot of mistakes. I think they made some mistakes with the anti-drug propaganda. I also think they made some mistakes by teaching us really trivial shit in school. Like, I don't know how many of y'all are using the Dewey Decimal System or not, <laughs> but it hasn't come up a lot in my adult life. <laughs> what they should have done is they should have set us down in the seventh grade and been like, here's how to do your taxes. <laughs> right? <laughs> And then they should have, that was the most enthusiastic response for taxes <laughs> I've ever heard. I thought we were in a rich city tonight. I didn't know. <laughs> no, and then they should have sat us down in the ninth grade and been like, here's how to raise chickens and not end up in toxic relationships, okay? <laughs> they didn't do any of that and now I can't spell necessarily. <laughs> um, I blame them for my bad taste. I blame them for my bad taste, my sordid relationship history. I am a pansexual person though, I'm pansexual. And thanks, I feel like my mom's here tonight, just <laughs> trying to encourage me. She's like, I don't know what that means, but good for you, darling. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds nice. Um, I can only tell you what pansexuality means to me though. It means I look at every single person and I'm like, in what timeline and in what scenario would we have sex, <laughs> right? And for most people, it's this timeline in any scenario. Um, <laughs> I feel like that's what happens though when your sexual awakening is a mix of the Go Daddy commercial and data from Star Trek. <laughs> Anything goes, you know? I don't know, I, 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 still, I still fuck an embarrassing amount of men though, even though I'm pansexual. And I've had really bad taste in men. Um, such bad taste. Uh, so bad that I actually have an ex who is a mime. <laughs> yes. Yes. I found out he was a mime where you find out all your exes are mimes, Instagram. 
I was scrolling through and I was like, wow, David, you decided to become a less versatile clown, you know? <laughs> and all that time we were together, you wouldn't shut the fuck up, so this is crazy. <laughs> My taste is so bad, though, that um, once I was scrolling through TV, and this is our <laughs> true story, Divorce Court was on. And I was like, I know that guy. <laughs> <laughs> and instead of being like, he was married that whole time, I was like, he looks pretty good in a Navy suit. <laughs> is this the one that got away? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, man, I watch a lot of porn, though. <laughs> I want to talk about this for a little bit. I watch so much porn that sometimes I see the word compilation out of context and I'm taken aback. <laughs> Someone's just trying to send me a nice YouTube video and I'm like, should I open this here? Or what's up? No, I like porn for a number of reasons, but one of the main reasons I like it is uh, the titles. I feel like the titles are a great opportunity to find out how dumb men really are, okay? <laughs> So, I was scrolling through pornography.org the other day. <laughs> it's a not-for-profit. Um, I don't know what y'all are on. <laughs> I was scrolling through, and I see this porn title, and it says, Two Chicks Fuck in an Art Studio. And it is very clearly a hair salon, okay? <laughs> bitch has another bitch over a wash bowl, all right? <laughs> There's just no attention to details. No attention to details. I did have a scary moment though. Um, I was scrolling through porn and I saw this title and it said, Big Titty Black Girl Has a Fun Time. <laughs> and I was like, oh shit. Did someone get a video of me putting together an Ikea bookshelf without instructions? <laughs> <laughs> Luckily it was a different Big Titty Black Girl, but it was a close call. <laughs> was a close fucking call. <laughs> oh man, I've uh, I fucked around and I've ended up in a relationship, y'all. Um, <laughs> some positivity there. <laughs> Most of y'all really did sound very sad about that. <laughs> I, yeah, I've ended up in a relationship and I've ended up in a relationship with a white man. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for the honest response. <laughs> The honest response. Usually it's just dead silent. Like everybody's like, are you safe at home? And I'm like, I promise I'm safe at home. Um, he's so white though. Uh, he's adult blonde, male white. Um, that's how white he is. But he's so white that once his mom actually referred to me as a special friend. <laughs> yeah. Like we were just two gay men living together in the 80s. <laughs> I was like, I don't think you know what that means. No, he is white, and being with a white partner makes you go that much harder on black shit, okay? Or this is for me personally, I go that much harder. This year, I decided to ask my white boyfriend, I said to him, I was like, so, what are you doing for MLK Day? <laughs> Just to keep him on his toes. Make sure he's doing his due diligence or whatever. But y'all, he had the caucasity <laughs> to ask me back what I was doing for MLK Day. <laughs> and I was like, bitch, I'll be asleep so I can dream. What did you, <laughs> what did you expect? <laughs> oh man, truth be told, truth be told, I miss the racism of the South. Um, <laughs> I grew up in a little place called Texas, and racism is just in your face down there. Like, you know where you stand with people. The problem with racism on the West Coast is it always happens whenever a white person is just trying to aggressively bond with me. <laughs> like, I'm in line at a Chipotle, and some dude named Mike is like, hey, remember when we used to have used separate water fountains at this Chipotle? And I'm like, no, but I wish we still did. Um, <laughs> There are some moments I love racism, though. Um, and this is just for me. Don't go ask your other brown friends when they love racism. You know, we've got a lot of white people here tonight, so don't want to give you any ideas. 
But I personally love racism when although the comment the person may be saying is racist, it's outweighed by the compliment that I feel like I'm receiving at the time. And this is a true story and a perfect example of it. So I was walking through this crosswalk one day and this white woman grabs me by the arm in the crosswalk. And she's like, oh my God, are you a black Italian? <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> and then I was like, what? <laughs> Ciao, bitch. <laughs> All right, you guys have been great. I've been Alyssa.